What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my volleyball coach reaction to Q Season 4, Episode 8. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool content. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok for more content. I want to give a special thanks to all the Patreon members for supporting Elevate Yourself financially, where I use all those funds directly back into upgrading the quality of our videos and sound, like this new mic attachment. You'll notice that I have a light here to give a soft glow to my face, also some tripod attachments, and other things just like this chair I'm sitting in. So thanks again for your support. That is true that we really get to learn how emotionally intelligent Hinata is. It's funny how in the beginning, you just see him as a simpleton and everyone sees him that same way because he's just very brash and he acts purely based on his emotion and how he feels. But then you see him develop relationships with every single character in this anime. And that ranges from Kenma to Zuki, you can put him on that radar now, to even Ushijima. And now you see how deep his friendship is with Kageyama. And that's not random because the fact that he's able to get people like Aune to even talk with him and interact with him just shows how comfortable people feel around Hinata. Now that you've summarized the arc of Kageyama, I never thought about him going from the tyrannical king to being the goody two-shoes. And that gives deeper meaning behind the goody two-shoes label because he did swing from two extremes. And that's just how human nature goes. Whenever we try to make changes, we end up overcorrecting. And as we mature, we slowly get to more of a balanced position. And I think last episode was a good swing from goody two-shoes to now being a better communicator and providing for the needs of his hitters. Thanks for clarifying how Kageyama is actually appreciative of the upperclassmen. That's another relational dynamic that I missed. And I can see how Kageyama can be quite appreciative of the patience that Suga Asahi, especially you saw him communicate with Kageyama so patiently, even after being yelled at with his hand going like this and say, ah, oh, please, you know, I I'm apologizing ahead of time that I'm gonna get blocked because I'm experimenting with a couple of hits. So you're, you're doing great. Kageyama couldn't have worked with better upperclassmen and it's not just beyond the patience but it's the the true care that you get from Daichi Tsuga and Asahi whereas if he ended up going to Shiratoizawa the emotional and social aspect might have been overlooked because their goal is just perform right now feed Ushijima and buy into a system Karasuna has been so much more of an organic growth and I think that's what makes Karasuna such an interesting team to follow if you've been enjoying my videos, please consider supporting me on my Patreon where you receive exclusive perks like early access to special videos like these high Haikyuu reaction videos and volleyball game videos, my private blog, my monthly podcasts, monthly live Q&A sessions, behind the scenes footage, and more. Now let's get this high Haikyuu party started. Still a close game. Karasuna's up by two. And we finally get to see Hinata play against his buddy Aone. Oh, Aone still closed the block. He has no eyebrows. That kind of reminds me of Brawly from Dragon Ball Z. Oh, and he finally got his revenge on Hinata. Uh oh. Maybe he got his finger jammed when he blocked, which happens very often, but it... Karasuno 24-23. Okay, looks like Karasuno scored that last point. To get lost in the crowd. Challenger. Who is the challenger this episode? a new type of synchronized attack. They're all going at the same time. Ooh, still out. That was in? That looked like it was on the wrong side of the sideline. Okay. Okay, they... <laughs> he was already talking about the punishment after a game because they're so used to losing. So they said, good kill, but then... 
Wow, I'm confused. I gotta watch this again. All right, if Asahi is spiking on the left side, if we turn to this angle, the sideline to the right is in and to the left is out. Yeah, so that landed out. So someone said nice kill, even though the ball was out. But then they won, even though the ball was out. Ah, so, so feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm misinterpreting that scene. Ah, oh, Steel Walks. This is one of the, the greatest core and shoulder stability exercises. Oh, that's such a great core exercise, the Steel Walk. You'll get sore really fast. Yeah, he wasn't doing his minus tempo. Oh, I, I guess they were saying it was a minus tempo, but it didn't look like it. Because it looked like he did wait a little bit longer. Maybe just to hold the blockers. A little bit more. Yeah, they still were able to get a decent block on that. Uh, Tsuki is offering some insight here. I think going back to how great blockers are just very annoying. They're just touching every single ball and always in your face. <laughs> Suki is basking in Hinata's failure. But he's probably has some long-term strategy for this solo speech here. in the crowd so my interpretation of getting lost in the crowd is maybe coach Ukai's way of saying you have to be in the moment and you have to be present for each point you can't think about anything else and just be absorbed into what's going on so that's my guess as in what this means so I'm really curious what the true meaning is Maybe he means the crowd of the team where he should try to play a little closer to his team's tempo and not go the free quick and stand out too much. Because then the team thinks you can only do one move and doesn't really help the team as a whole. Yeah. Because if they're not going to run the minus super free quick, then you just have to focus on the other hitters. I understand now. So maybe that just means be a part of what the team's doing, not just your own talented thing, even if it's working. Because the team's benefit is always the most important. Not to still get into those touches on those blocks. Did he just say Kakiyama? But he's charging on the court. Let's look at that charging animation. Man, you got the steam rising, then you got these flames, and you got this swirl going around. That's why Japanese anime auras are just so well animated you got multiple layers going in different directions and i remember when i was a kid watching dragon ball z i would go outside and just like try to charge really hard i'd be on the sidewalk and be going ah! and then after being almost dizzy from like yelling and screaming and making my blood vessels pop and my eyes pop out i'm like did i get stronger no but it felt like i was exhibiting that same aura. One thing that separates 
Japanese anime from all other cartoons from other cultures is they do such a great job of capturing the feel and essence of things. Even if things aren't drawn realistically perfect, the feel is something that many people get inspired by and can identify with. And this aura is exactly that. They're taking a lot of steps there. Oh, is that Daichi getting a bounce ball? Now their offense is slowly starting to come together. Now, instead of just watching out for Hinata and then moving on to someone else, they have to watch everyone now. Even a small change in rhythm can really throw a team off. set to the other side oh but they still got the freak quick when they want on command <laughs> he's smiling in his face yeah don't make the minus tempo the backbone of your offense use it as a tool of your offense so that you can use it when necessary Yeah, you have to read the pass, then you read the setter, and then you react to the hitter. Yeah, Hinata's a very versatile hitter. That's Even though he's short, when you're short, you at least get to move very fast and you can do a lot of different types of, of attacks due to your speed. <laughs> oh, that was an interesting uh, little animal reference. I wonder what Grandpa Ukai meant by that. Maybe that they're not using it. Well, they're using it effectively now when they need to versus every single time. <laughs> he doesn't like that old guy. He's probably grumpy. Before it was kind of a one-dimensional offense. Now it has a little bit more complexity, more diversity. Yeah, if you can make your middle blockers hesitate, that is the key. Just make them point one second late and you get an advantage. Especially with read blocking where you're usually following the setter, trying to get one step ahead. <laughs> Don't interrupt. He's having his soliloquy. Hey, where's the, the water bottle? High cue to the top. So my guess as to why they stopped doing the halftime, different halftime animations is instead of spending money on animating a different person serving the water bottle, keep the same animation, spend those the money on those frames on the actual show. So maybe that was a good budget choice. It's a new player with the man bun. Man, the Karasuno's still up by three. Suki's so getting tired because he's actually putting an effort into his jump. Yeah, I don't think you've ever seen Suki tired. That's why you got to eat more, Suki. Put more energy in your body. <laughs> yeah, Hinata's an eating and playing machine. But Kageyama does not approve. I 
that is that's exactly what Kageyama should be thinking. But maybe the other team, hopefully they don't figure it out. Because if they start to see Tsuki tired and they see that the setter's not going to go to them, then they don't even have to focus on Tsuki anymore. Ooh, some encouragement from Kageyama. <laughs> he learned encouragement. That's another level of communication from Kageyama. Yeah, deception is the key to hitting line. Man, everyone's struggling now. <laughs> His own upperclassmen are talking trash to him. What a good team supporting alumni. Oh, uh, we have not seen Yamaguchi in some time. Oh, I know exactly how that feels to be on the bench. Come on, pull him in. Another animation where the aura is given off just by the, the stare, the looks. Oh, what? He's not gonna put Yamaguchi in? Kinoshita. Gotta remember his name, because he probably has his own arc. Ooh. Oh, this is the other person that was working on his jump float, and Yamaguchi felt a little bit intimidated by the competition. And this is what happens when a coach gives opportunity. Everyone feels like they can contribute and is are more motivated to, to work hard during practice. Can they keep the lead? Oh, did they run it again? Oh, I want to read it this time. Look at that eye contact with no eyebrows. That's probably why he shaved his eyebrows so he can make more glaring eye contact when he's blocking. Fast the tempo, synchronize the haku. Now I remember why I was so confused the first time I saw this. All this new information, now I understand the context. Set the man bun. <laughs> oh! Kogane is frustrated. <laughs> it's so frustrating. I know exactly what he's going through. Let's see what Kageyama is observing about Hinata. I feel like Hinata's been doing that pretty much majority of the season except for season one. Because once he embraced his role as a decoy, he's been going hard all the time trying to convince people that he's going to go no matter what. And Katarsuno coming in strong at the end. Losing the first two sets and coming in, about to win the fourth one. Was that Kogane? Oh, that was Aone again. The greatest wall in the prefecture has no eyebrows. And this was so fitting after Asahi had this breakthrough. So that, that first time I watched season 8 was like perfect accidental timing. Some of it actually did make sense. Oh, come on. We haven't seen one of Asahi's man bun kills in a long time. Is he going to just crush it off the block? Yes, I remember now. Oh, off of Aone's hands. Not even just any blocker. The best blocker in the place. Karasuno came on top. All right. They were able to adapt to the bunch blocking system. Yeah, I remember being so confused about who this blonde 
guy was when I first watched it. Yeah, Kakeyama already has fans. Oh, yeah, I remember, and the finger push-ups. Yeah, the touch of a setter's hands are, is so critical. People don't realize that. By the way, this finger training stuff is real. There's actually a progression that I lead my setters in or like when I do my setter camps, I give them homework to do at home so they can strengthen the hands. Just lifting weights in general, like doing dumbbell presses, shoulder presses, deadlifts, having to grip a heavy object will naturally strengthen your forearms, your wrist, as well as your fingers because you have to grip so much. And when you lift weights, I don't recommend wearing gloves because that does some of the gripping for you. And you want to strengthen all the tendons and ligaments all around these areas. I mean, if you look how thick my fingers are, I never really had, I used to have skinny fingers until I started lifting weights. Naturally, when I started lifting weights, hand passing became easier. My fingers don't really hurt as much when I play and they can just tolerate a lot more pounding. But a, a basic progression you can do if you want to improve your hand passing or setting. First thing was what I call these isometric setter push-ups against the wall. So if you stand next to a wall about three to four feet away, you put your fingers against the wall and you just hold it there against your fingers, okay? Not many people can go straight into just a finger push-up position. So you do that. If you can hold that and build it up for 30 seconds, you got some pretty strong fingers in the beginning. Then the second one is to actually do a wall push-up with that same st stiff finger position. And then your goal is to kind of work your way lower to uh, down the wall until you get about halfway to your waist. And then you do the same thing on the ground where you do the push-up position with the fingers, see if you can hold it for five seconds at a time before they start to shake and feel like you don't wanna do it to the point where they break. Then you do 10 seconds and 15 seconds and try to build it to 30 seconds. Once you can hold it for 30 seconds, then you can start trying to do push-ups with that. But once again, start with an isometric push-up position against the wall. So you're standing almost upright and just carrying some of your body weight and, and work your way down until you can build it to a full push-up. But it does make a big, big, big difference. Suki just correct Kageyama on Kogane's name. Yeah, Kogane is he's tall and he's athletic. So being able to set at a higher height is definitely an advantage, obviously, from being a tall setter. the bow. I think they're going to bow at the end. I wonder what the tension is about. Maybe because they beat them and kicked them out of the tournament, so they're not sure how they're going to react to that. Oh, they're intimidated by them. Aone and Hinata get to meet again since the last tournament. That's the last time they saw each other. But for Aone to bow directly to Hinata at the end, that's a lot of respect. <laughs> I love Hinata's facial expressions. Oh, so funny. Man, this is my dream. Just to practice endlessly after hours, get try to work on getting better. Man, the server has to put in a lot more effort than the passer. That's why he's tired. <laughs> Nishinoya still struggles with hand passing. finger push-ups. Hey, no, no amount of strength will help improve that at this point. I don't think it's Nishinoya's strength. I think it's his body position. He needs to still keep his feet behind the ball. He needs to overrun it. 
but he passed his jump surge platform pretty easily. He hasn't been progressing faster with this overhead passing. Especially at the highest level, you need all the tools you can get to, to be the best player you can be. Yeah, that's got to be an encouragement. If you're Serves are, are messing with the best passer in the area. Wait, I want to do a serve that Nishinoi can get? I don't understand that. Oh yeah, okay, I'm, I'm glad to hear that Yamaguchi is is motivated to compete against him. And that was some words of encouragement from Zuki. He's grown a lot too. I think Hinata's hitting is already at a very good level. He needs to work on his passing. Passing by yourself is good. But having someone serve or hit at you is, is a totally different game. Unfortunately, you can't simply get better just by passing by yourself. But there are a lot of good drills you can do on your own just to develop some touch. So I'm not saying doing these drills by yourself are a bad thing. There's just a point where to get to a certain level, you need to have someone serve and hit tough at you. <laughs> Typical older brother picking on the younger sibling. But at least he's teaching her. I mean, actually, I'll tell you a little story about my older brother. I don't know if I mentioned this in the first reaction of season four, episode eight. This reminds me of my relationship between myself and my older brother who's six years older. Still can't believe I did that on accident. It's hard for me to watch this and say like, oh, I saw that before. It's like, oh yeah, it's because I did another reaction video to it already. My older brother, when I was younger, was a bully. He used to do crazy things to me. Well, obviously he would just like hit me for no reason. Pick on me. He would make me do the dishes by counting. He would make it a game, but really it was just so he can make me do the dishes and he wouldn't have to. Pants me whenever he got the chance. He would like sit on my head and fart on it. Typical older sibling behavior. Looking back, it was all funny stuff, but as a kid, of course you hate that stuff. And so I'm very grateful that Hinata is not doing that to the younger sister. And the funny thing is I actually ended up becoming more uh, athletically accomplished than my brother. Even though I think my brother's actually a little bit more athletic than I am. And I think part of that is because when you grow up fighting against such a dominant force that anything you want, you have to fight so hard. I remember even wanting to just get my stuffed animal back from him. I just had a claw, tooth, and nail. Majority of the time I wouldn't. He would just throw in the garbage can or put it somewhere really high where I couldn't get it and I would just cry and then Everyone thinks you're a brat, but no one realizes that you're just being picked on 24-7. The funny thing is he's a pastor now, and he's actually one of the best older brothers a person could ask for, so he's changed a lot over the years. So every time I see sibling scenes where the older sibling's actually nice to the younger sibling or trying to nurture them and teach them, it makes me feel happy inside. That is the old Mikasa ball there. I like how they use this instead of the fleece attack to show that he's probably using an old used ball. And then you have the 
or at this time of the anime, the current Olympic volleyball there that the sister's holding. <laughs> I remember finding that part funny. Uh, even the younger sibling recognizes his progress. Oh, look at that dirt on the ball. We gotta see that. It's a great illustration. That's a dirty ball. By the way, for those who've owned this actual former Olympic Mikasa volleyball, this is exactly what the dirt looks like. It gathers on the edges of the seams and usually the edges of the leather start to fray. So I'm surprised they didn't draw that part, but the shadows and the dirt accumulate and the dirt accumulation and the scratches are, are so spot on. And he not the drawing his usual inspiration from the sky. Lots of references to the sky in this anime. Here's my immediate reaction to episode eight. Now that I've actually finally seen all three seasons and half of season four leading up to this point, I could definitely appreciate that scrimmage a lot more. And it's more than just kind of knowing all the new characters that I didn't know when I first watched it. I just never guessed Kageyama's development. And mind you, this is four seasons into it before Kageyama finally matured enough to where he is able to have more of a balanced perspective. He went from thinking everyone should be able to hit his perfect sets to trying to give everyone the perfect set to now learning that he needs to be able to communicate with his hitters and it's more of a relationship than it is about you're right and I'm wrong or I'm wrong and you're right. Or did I get that right? <laughs> you're right and I'm wrong or I'm right and you're wrong. Volleyball, especially between the setter and the hitters, is a two-way street. I mean, it both are equally responsible for the result of the last contact. On top of that, seeing Hinata's maturity going from being the ball boy, I mean, that's something that I would have never guessed happened if I was watching season one and learning the information and appreciating the team context and being able to see the game as a whole and then being lost in the crowd, being a part of the team in the offense versus just doing what you think is best and what's the trickiest or what you think is the most effective. And they were able to break Dateko's read block system within a single match. And to be able to adapt that quickly to a sophisticated blocking system, that's really difficult to do, but that's a sign of a good team. Remember how I always say that the team that makes the last adjustment is a team that wins. So as long as you have that in mind, you have the ability to adapt to these type of situations no matter what crazy thing or what new system or what style the other team brings you just have to be willing to take risk observe what you're doing and try to make them adjust to you don't forget to watch this video next right here and check out all the previous haiku reaction videos in this playlist down here